Good morning. I have a cold. I've had a cold for days and I actually feel worse today. I was hoping I'd feel better. I wanted to start the uh, state axemanship series, uh, the five pillars of um, effective axemanship or whatever it's going to be, but I'm not up for that. So, and also it's raining just endlessly and the weather forecast is basically like rain forever. So I'm going to do this, which I actually think is kind of neat. During the week this week, I may do a quickie overview of the Snow and Neely Boys Axe, which I just ordered before I send it back because I'm not, I'm not into it. But today we're going to do something pretty cool. So I just released this video series on this rawhide axe handle protector, little brace thing. And I've been thinking for a while, I had this idea that you could just use um, cloth basically cloth and glue um, just trying to think of things that were accessible to people that might work better than tape and I've definitely seen things online of people using types of cloth like stuff and I can't remember what but maybe some kind of like tough um, you know super tough cloth material with super glue or something like that I just don't, I can't remember the details uh, but also a commenter on that last series of videos left a comment saying they used fiberglass resin and fiberglass which is you know like a cloth woven out of glass it's not particularly strong the effect is basically that it's just like if you take a bunch of threads and make a rope out of it it's strong well that works with lashings too so if you take a weak string and you wrap it around something enough time say like a couple of cross sticks eventually you can make a strong joint even with very weak material so it's the same thing like if i were to take a lightweight cloth like say cheesecloth and wrap it enough times eventually it becomes actually very strong and in a way it may be stronger than a single layer of something because it's made up of of different layers that behave differently under stress the idea is to take some kind of glue and some kind of light cloth and just wrap that around a bunch of times and build it up um, and have a smooth not not too thick not with any kind of excessive amount of texture but something that would be really quick so i thought okay well i could use hide glue but that's extremely water soluble again it could be coated with linseed and that may or may not work and then i thought okay well there's white glue um there's obviously like super glue which would be waterproof and you know carpenter's glue and white glue are kind of the same they are affected by moisture but they're slowly affected um hide glue is like affected instantly so i think the white glues may work fine what I decided to use is casein glue, and casein glue is milk protein with uh, an alkali, either borax or lime. I'm probably going to use both mixed together. So I have some cottage cheese, and any kind of milk protein like this can work. I'm going to actually boil this to remove some of the fat because it's full fat, or in, I think it's full fat uh, cottage cheese. And if I boil it, it'll purify it just a little bit. Okay, so the thing about casein glue is that it's basically waterproof or close to it. So it's still affected by moisture to some extent, but I'm really not sure how much because I haven't used it a lot. I've, made, I've messed with it a little bit, made it a few times, but I haven't really used it that seriously. So we're just going to whip up a batch. I'm not even going to measure anything. I'm just going to kind of guess, guess at it, and uh, it's all just a big experiment. First, though... I'm going to take a very small amount of this curd, mix it with lime and sawdust and fill in this crack. But a bit of this lime, not quite half. I don't know, I can't remember how much you're supposed to use. But my guess is whatever I do, it'll be good enough. The lime will start to act on the milk protein and sort of soften and dissolve it. My impression is that high glue is a better performing glue overall, but you know, sometimes you need waterproof glue and that's where this stuff comes in. So I'm just gonna get this mashed enough that it begins to really work, like the lime really begins to work on the protein. And you can make this protein by leaving milk out until it sours and curdles, and then you strain it and boil it and then dry it. Or, or use it fresh and you get these um, you know mostly just the casein protein it's uh, known as casein glue usually or milk glue um, same base is used to make paint uh, if you've ever heard of milk paint so now I'm just gonna make some basically wood flour I should probably do this to 
try, try filling in these holes on this cable. Now let's see the the lime has really dissolved all that protein. Like there's no chunks left and it's all liquid now. So the handle's already clean. I haven't oiled this handle ever. It's very dry, very old. There's absolutely no oil in it, so this should stick really well. And I just want to put some of this liquid glue as a primer, you know, to make sure that the putty sticks. The main thing is I want it compressed down so that there's not any air space or nothing like that. And the rest doesn't matter because it, it can just be sanded once it's dry. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside to dry over the wood stove. Then I'm gonna get this boiling to remove as much fat as possible just so this glue is maybe a little bit stronger. Just add some water, doesn't really matter how much while we're here, clean this up. Pack this stuff in here. I want it raised, but I want it to make sure it's really compressed into that crack. Okay, so we'll see how that turns out too. My guess is it'll be great. For what I really should do is chisel these guys out and replace them with little strips of uh, maple wood. Uh, now that this is boiled, there isn't much left because all the water that was in the cottage cheese cooked out. This also used to be called cheese glue because people would literally make it out of cheese. And this won't, this is not water soluble at all, right? It's totally, like you couldn't do much of anything with this. You could dry it into a lump that's something like plastic. But we're going to add lime, less than twice or less than equal amounts and get this kind of cut together a little bit so it's the lime can start dissolving the protein. So this can be softening a little bit and starting to work while I find my borax. This is a pretty fun project. I love doing this kind of stuff. Just to show you real quick, this is casing um, chunks. So this is basically like we just did. I curdled the milk, I strained it, and then I boiled it in water, and then I dried the resulting curds, and that's what this is here. And this is actually the same thing, but it's powdered. So it's ground into a fine powder, and that really helps it dissolve much quicker. It still takes a while, but it works better. This is gonna have to get a lot more liquid. All right, I found my jar of borax. We're just gonna round that off with a little bit of borax to bring the proportions closer to 50-50 alkali with protein. Borax is strongly alkali. It also is very resistant to mold. Um, it's also a fire retardant. You're pretty much covered there, you know? It definitely needs some water. Actually, I'm gonna add lime water. But what lime water is, is it's water that's completely saturated with lime. It looks like we need quite a bit of it. I want this glue actually pretty liquid anyway, so this may take a little while. I think it's going to take a combination of time and a little bit of effort like this to get this to really start to go liquid. I think any chunks of casing that haven't gone liquid are just useless to us. They're just chunks of junk. Some people might think, well, canvas sounds good because it's very thick and it's strong. Maybe, but I'm thinking more of a thin cloth and using the strength and numbers theory. I found this muslin type of cloth. It's uh, like I can see my finger through it. It's very flexible. It's very thin, but it's, you know, it's fairly strong in this direction. So in terms of compression and keeping the wood from exploding outward and just really holding it tight, no problem, this is gonna perform admirably. The only thing that the canvas might work better at is resisting abrasion and tearing. So like if there's a hard impact by something sharp against the side of the cloth, uh, maybe this would hold up better. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe with the thin cloth, it would just tear a little on one layer, but not the other layers, right? Because it's not continuous. We have, you know, each piece is almost doing its own thing in the layer. If we have like, say, four layers of this or more, 
in thickness at the top of the axe. If we go with kind of the fiberglass theory, with the fiberglass um, you don't do that. You don't take a super thick material and then just use one layer of it or two layers of it. You take thin material and you build it up in layers. So that's what we're going to do. The other thing about this cloth is look how it stretches. See, so if I stretch this around an uneven surface, it conforms really well. So it's going to conform really well to everything and like adjust to the changes in shape of the handle around there because that's like the place where the handle changes shape the most. So I really like this. I was also looking at this, which is a nylon mesh. Um, this is probably some kind of thing people use for curtains or whatever. It's nylon, so it's probably very strong. I think this would probably be excellent. It might even be better, but I kind of want to prove the point by using this weak muslin. I'm thinking like an inch wide maybe, but just as long as I can get away with on you know this particular piece of cloth I have here. And I can always use more than one piece too, but we'll just start with that and see how it goes. So yeah, I actually found a whole big jar of lime water here. We have an endless supply of water saturated with lime. We want this glue pretty liquid. I don't want to go too far here, but it's definitely getting better, but it's going to take a while for all these hard, cheesy, sticky, melted cheese stuff to uh, dissolve completely. Now, unlike high glue, once you start to mix this stuff up, it has a limited shelf life. Like you have to use it within a certain amount of time. And I don't, I can't remember what that amount of time is supposed to be or anything like that. You can make something similar with blood. Uh, blood protein and lime. This is pretty dry. You can really just kind of treat it like wood. I want to make a second disposable brush. This is what I do for my grafting paint. Trim off the end, make it as short as I want it. You know, no brush washing, no going to look for a brush, no forgetting about your brush and having a bunch of glue or paint or grafting wax or whatever dry in it. So we're probably going to go down to about right here four inches maybe, a little primer. Now unlike high glue, this doesn't have to be warm to use it. So that gives us lots of working time. Oh, by the way, with the glue, there's really, I don't see any chunks in here anymore. I just kept coming by and doing this a little bit and that really helped, but there's no doubt that most of the work was done by the alkali. So I think the best way to do this is gonna be to treat it like paper mache, where you kinda get it all goopy and wet and saturated and then you take your fingers and strip out the extra. It looks like we might run out. I milk it for all it's worth here. I, pro I guess I probably should have done a test strap to see how much of this I want to use. Just get this in here, mop all the extra up. I'm going to keep opening it out real flat like this. Now once I get past the first wrap I'll be able to start stretching it really tight. If you could get away from using carpenter's glue or just regular white glue. It'd be pretty easy to, to throw this together, right? I mean, you know, it's a little bit of a production for me because I'm doing my little casing thing here and that's fun for me. I really think the carpenter's glue would probably work. Uh, maybe I'll do one of those just for kicks, although I'm not sure I have an ax to do it on right now. Oh, definitely we should call this the mummy wrap. Now this is conforming, but it's bunching up a little down here where it really drops off fast. And I could kind of stretch it, but then it just leaves extra material here. It'll be fine though, because we can just smooth this off and then press it, you know, crush it underneath here, underneath the next layer. That nice and tight now that we're cruising along here. You can see every time I pull it, the glue seeps out. I really think that's far enough and since I keep stretching this this side, the downhill side, you see how the cloth wants to bend up now? I'm just going to take advantage of that. So one more to make it even. I'm going to wrap back up the handle. That's it, just like that. I'm going to try just cutting it off here and Leaving it like that. I think that's good enough for a first, first run. Lay them in here really neatly. 
It's looking pretty good. Not exactly handsome or anything, but uh, tempted to trim this, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just leave it too. And then now I'm not sure I can help myself. OCD starts to set in. It's too late now. There's no turning back. Clearly it's not going to look as good as rawhide or leather or something like that, if that matters. I just want to make sure this is very smooth off. Because once it's dry, that's that. If I had extra glue, I would probably put on a thin layer, paint it on over the whole thing. But we could also do that later, after it's dried. Um, or I may seal it with linseed oil or something like that. Okay, but for now, this glue, until it dries, is still water soluble, so I'm gonna clean this off. There you go, the mummy. I think if you use some like uh, mesh that you could see through, that could be interesting. It really does need another coat of glue. Offer extra strength and toughness. So now I'm just gonna set this off to dry. This is like, uh, it's a pretty firm cheddar. So I'm just gonna grind it into little bits here and boil that to try to remove some of the fat at least. I don't know how tough this glue is. My impression is so far that it's actually not that tough. Not like hide glue is tough. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I'm just gonna boil that and make some more casing. Yeah, so if I was trying to make this super clean and low in fat, I would start with skim milk or low fat milk, non-fat milk rather, and then probably boil it in a couple different changes of water. This time I'm gonna use less alkali than I did before. Less lime at least. We we'll use some borax there because I've made this paint before and had it turn out kind of chalky and I don't want it to be chalky. So we're just gonna use a little bit. Use just enough to make it, the protein completely dissolve and become liquid. Wanting to lean towards the protein because see when the protein dries, it's like this plastic material and it seems somewhat tough. This isn't completely cured yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on the final brushing of this stuff, which I'm hoping will dry a little more plastic-like. I feel pretty sure that hide glue would perform really well in this application, except for the issue of it not being waterproof. There is a way to make hide glue waterproof, actually, and that is, drum roll please, formaldehyde. That's right, formaldehyde is a tanning agent. It will tan leather. Um, so since the proteins in hide glue are the same as leather, I mean, it's almost like liquid skin or something. It will also tan those, permanently making them waterproof. It doesn't seem like the new glue wants to stick to the old. So maybe I should have done this immediately while it was still wet. All right, well, I'm just gonna leave this to dry now. Another thing to mention is that this is basically like casing paint, also known as milk paint. You'll hear it called milk paint sometimes. As such, we could mix pigment with it and make actual colored paint and paint that on here. So back to the wood stove to dry. All right, this is pretty much dry now. So what I did is I ended up putting two coats of this on, which I think is what I probably should have used in the first place. It has dried to more of the glossy finish that I was after in the first place. I don't know how this is going to hold up, um, and I won't until I use it. So I'll try to actually use this some. It has a waxy feel to it now. The two extra coats obscured pretty much the grain of the fabric, like you can see it faintly here, but you can't really see the lines and stuff that much. Doesn't feel funny or anything like that. I'm saying it's fairly unobtrusive to my hand, you know? So we'll just see how it holds up. So the other questions will be like, how well does the fabric hold up? If it hits some sharp piece of wood, is it gonna grab that fabric and tear it? Well, since there's multiple layers kind of going in slightly different directions, my guess is not. I think it's actually going to be semi-tough. And the other question would be the actual coat of this stuff that I put on. Again, those two coats, are they going to be tough or are they going to kind of like flake off if they get damaged? I'm not going to test it yet because I feel like it's not fully cured. It feels a little, a little soft to me. 
so I'm gonna let it cure for a while, but I'll just be using it and we'll find out what happens. And this, what I'm kind of thinking is that say if this worked with um, Elmer's glue or, or wood glue, which is pretty much the same thing, it could be a replacement for tape like something pretty quick that would actually make something more functional than tape. Because tape is really good at compression, but it does tear easily if anyone's used it a lot. You probably know that already, like electrical tape, duct tape, all that stuff will tear fairly easy when uh, it's impacted by like a sharp piece of wood. So hopefully this will hold up a little better. It certainly is quick and you can, you know, usually find something like this, maybe an old sheet or something like that. And I'll be back with more axe content soon. The Snow Neely Boys Axe, uh, quick look at that. Not much of a review, I guess, just um, looking at, at what it looks like out of the box before I send it back. And the uh, state factors of effective axemanship kind of thing. See you soon. Dead smooth.